Okay. So I'm going to give it to you straight. I've never seen Fuck today. Tomorrow comes movies. This is Carlos Ferro, the voice of Dominic Santiago in the Gears of War franchise, Leonardo da Vinci in Assassin's Creed, and a bunch of others. And you are watching Tomorrow Comes Movies right here. Welcome back to another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. We are the podcast that talks beyond movies, including video games, not music, comics, television, Star Wars, pop culture, Funko, anime, and much more. As always, your hosts are the Patrick and... Carissa. Can't shield these lies. Episode 97. It's funny because this this title doesn't seem very... uh, witty or theme but for those who will get through this episode they'll understand why it's called this but i was looking at it going this might be like one of our weaker episode titles you think so i don't well especially after you know hear no wick see no wick kill no wick i mean it's a lot to follow up with can't shield these lies but um you know hopefully people can put- i think i like it I like once, it once 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 people like dive into the episode a little bit more they'll understand why you can't shield these lies. Exactly. So, yeah, we're rapidly approaching 100. I love to say that because we're this close to finishing phase one of Tomorrow <laughs> Comes Movies. You keep calling it that. Uh, so, so the total, like, all in the hundreds are going to be the end of phase two? Yeah, basically, that would be the end of phase two. And then, you know, basically, we're trying to catch up to Marvel. <laughs> you know, we got a Can few we, phases. Uh, wait, wait, wait. This is a good one. Can we catch up to Phase 4 by the time Marvel starts Phase... Ends Phase 4? I so would, we can start Phase 5 with them. Well, I'd like to I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. I think especially when we announce some news, I think you know what I'm talking about. You know, we'll be able to... You know, our contents can be a little bit shaken up, if that makes sense, for Phase 2. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. But, uh, yeah, very excited about that, you know, that... That is coming up soon, and we already kind of lined up what we kind of want to do, and I'm not sure if it's going to, you know, if it's going to be a standard episode. I think it could surpass time-wise. It could be past two hours. Who knows? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very intrigued at what people are going to think when they listen to it, but I think it's a pretty cool episode, especially if you know anything about us and our history. It kind of makes sense to what we're going to do. I don't know if that even makes sense to people who are like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, you even lost me. <laughs> I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> well, it's, it's the big no. one zero zero, so we're going to have to do something cool and obviously oh, okay. something different. You, you lost me for a second. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, do I keep playing it off? Or do I just <laughs> say I don't know? <laughs> Apparently Chris is Sorry. not <laughs> Chris is not cued into the to what's going on. Also, oh, no, uh, <laughs> I want to throw it out there that we have ordered new buns and they are arriving. I think these are going to be a little bit smaller than the original run, right, Chris? Just a little bit, like a hair smaller. We want free buttons. <laughs> yeah, Sticker we're ch- <laughs> is doing a hundred day giveaway. So check them out on Instagram, Sticker Mule. They asked these random questions. The question that got us our free buttons, they're one-inch buttons, we should be getting them by the end of this week, I believe, is would you rather have an endless supply of sushi or pizza? Did you answer this? I did. I Uh, said pizza. And and you know what's funny? I didn't even make it witty. Like Other people put pizza and like fire emojis and like drooling emojis. My dumb ass just wrote pizza. (laughs) I didn't even know that you you even like said anything because I know that like some of the stipulations are if you just like or comment. So I'm like looking at this like how did we win? What did we do? I don't remember I like liking this. And I comment. Well, now I started liking their stuff, so we can win again because we're cheap asses. <laughs> no, but we have. Okay, I I love Sticker Mule. I think they have the best deals. If you are interested in trying, and we're not like. We're not getting any, like, paid advertising or anything. It's just me, like, ragging about them. Um, but if you want to try out their product before diving in, they have great deals on trying things. Yeah, especially if you're, like, a podcast or your yeah. YouTube channel or you're a small company 
or you just want to make stickers with your name on it. I mean, you know, there's just so many endless possibilities. But yeah, we won, and we were very fortunate because we needed some new buns anyway, because I have some that I need to send out. And what else? What else? What else? We sent out our latest uh, giveaway that we just ended. I just sent that out. I got a message from the person that won. They're very happy. So the packaging was fantastic. I'm just still waiting for them to post the damn picture because they told me they were going to. But uh, I know that I got there safely. They were very happy about it. So we got another giveaway. It was originally for 500, but now it's moving to 600 because we just uh, eclipsed 600 subscribers. I think we're at 611. On our YouTube channel, so yeah, thank you. Oh, hold the applause, hold the applause, everyone. Yeah, we're celebrating 600 while someone's out there celebrating 15k. But uh, we're very fortunate, so thank you to everyone who's on our YouTube channel who checks us you out. Know, it's low and slow, Patrick. Like when you cook stuff, like when you like smoke or you like put it in a crock pot, low and slow because it's gonna be better when we get to the end. Exactly. When I was uh, when I was in school, that's what they used to say about me, Patrick. Slow <laughs> and low. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Luckily, I I gained a little speed, but I'm still low in terms of height. <laughs> but uh, no. But in all seriousness, thank you to everyone who's supported our YouTube channel, supported Tomorrow Comes Movies, but especially the YouTube channel because you know it's a big deal to hit 611 subscribers. It's a big deal, and a lot of it. I don't think he's ever going to listen to us, but if he does, a uh, big shout out to Homespun Geek, who's got an awesome YouTube channel, which I'm going to link in the description of this episode. He did a support Saturday where he shouts out two channels, one he chooses another that people can uh, recommend, and he chose us for, I think it was two Saturdays ago, his support Saturday, and I'll link that video as well. And he does a really cool thing where he does a giveaway, and you got to go check out the channel. So out of nowhere, it kind of happened for us. I was like, what the hell? Our notifications are blowing up. And... You know, thanks to that support Saturday, you know, he he helped us uh, eclipse 600. So thank you, Homespun Geek. You were awesome. And I love his channel. It's actually one of my favorite channels to watch, especially because, you know, he has better luck on mystery boxes than we do. So sometimes I get more yeah. giddy for him. But, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I was like, Chris, what the hell's going on here? Why are we getting blown up? And you're like, I don't know. And I'm like, wait, what the hell is this, this hashtag? And it turns out we were blessed enough to be uh, featured in that channel. Yes, you, you said it all. Yeah, so we're hoping to hit 700. Like I said, we're going to keep going. Yeah, I'm very excited about the 600 The 600 sub giveaway. I think is going to be pretty epic, especially considering that we curated uh, several different pops that I think in total value-wise and just some of the ones you can get. I think that the stakes are pretty high, and I think they're worth uh, checking it out. But I'm going to do something... Uh, a little bit different in terms of how to win it. You know, it's not going to be like an Instagram thing or a Twitter or Facebook. Chris and I kind of figured out how to do this. And then I was telling Chris behind the scenes that, you know, Homespun Geek kind of put us on the map. So I think we should also try to help out other channels along with this giveaway. So that's something I'm going to be working on as well. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. So the buns are coming, and then once they do, I'll throw another thing up there if anybody wants any. Because we got plenty of stickers. I mean, stickers are not the problem. The buns were going faster than the stickers. I think because we have more. Do we order more stickers than buns? Um, yes, because I did a promo thing with Sticker Mule, and I got like so many for X amount, of, like for a dollar. I'm telling you, man, they got deals. Free shipping, and I paid a dollar. I got 10 stickers, dude. Totally worth it. And then, um,. I ordered some more stickers, just like in a different setup, but I got more stickers than I did buttons. Not intentionally, it just happened. Well, you know, it all works out. Like I said, Sir Camille, we won that giveaway. Also, real quick here, you know, all talking about the YouTube channel, we got a few videos that I would like people to check out if you haven't already. I did a San Diego uh, shared exclusive Comic Con uh, pop hunt and haul, and I did that one actually by myself. Chris was not able to do it with me because the audio and the video was not the greatest quality, so Chris was like, just do it, you damn self, Patrick. So I did that one, and then a couple of videos we have as well. We did the Funko 5 challenge from our good friend Budget Club Toy Hunter challenged us. We just did that one, and I just put up today, which which is today is Monday, but by the time you guys hear this, it'll probably be a different day. But I put up Poppin' on the Road. If you guys don't know anything about that, that's our Funko series where we travel to different uh, Funko Pop shops or like comic shops, just anywhere that sells pops that's a unique store. We go check it out while we're in town, usually for a con. And we just put up episode number four, which was the Pop Shack in Las Vegas, which was actually was that back in June? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, we're we're slowly catching up, which is nice because this weekend Chris is gonna be coming to California and she's gonna be 
Joining me as we go to Animanga. Don't try to sound cool. <laughs> We're going to Animanga in Pomona, California. They got a really cool guest lineup. So if you guys have not uh, heard about Animanga, if you're in the area, if you're willing to drive out, if you're not in the area, go to AnimangaUSA.com, uh, which is A N I M A N G A USA dot com. And you can get your tickets. You can check out the guest lineup. They got a lot of cool people, especially they're bringing out the cast of. Uh, Re-Zero, Starting Life in Another World. I think that's the full title. And I just, I'm almost done with the series. And I'm pretty jacked up that I just uh, just started watching it. Because I'm like, you know, some of the stuff that they're, you know, some of the guests are famous for. Chris and I have not watched the animes. Except one person in particular, Philo from Rising of the Shield Hero, which I'm very excited about, is going to be there. But I decided to watch this show. And I'm like, ooh, so I'm excited to meet. They have like a whole bunch of the cast is going to be there, including the main character, uh, Subaru. So definitely check that out. And uh, I think Chris and I are going to film some new videos, too, because a lot of our videos are pretty dated now, like a couple weeks now. But we still have videos left to put out. Isn't that crazy, Crystal? Yeah. Our content, I, I was I was talking to somebody else uh, recently that you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about, you know, another content creator. We put out so much content. And I'm like, why are we always behind? We put out insane amount of content I didn't realize. Like, we're always putting something out. We really are. <laughs> I, I love the enthusiasm. Just sell it for us, Chris. <laughs> Shut up. No, but uh, yeah, just uh, just a few other videos. Check out our Pop on the Road. That's cool, the Pop Shack. We got some more Pop on the Roads coming out. And uh, what else did we put out recently? Oh, we recently put out another Funko Hall uh, Ronin Expo, which we went to in Los Angeles for Chris's birthday weekend. And we got a pop sign wrong, and you got to check that out because that is crazy. And let us know in that if we should change our name to Tomorrow Comes Wreckage. When you see the video, understand. Chris says no, no on the you. name change. What? No, not doing it, Patrick. No. <laughs> and I think that basically concludes what's going on. So, Chris, are you ready to get into this episode? I am ready. All Ready. right, so let's talk movies, and we're actually going to be in the movie section. We're going to talk about a trailer that dropped at San Diego Comic-Con, I think, what, last week? Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Chris and I are huge Kevin Smith fans. We love all of his films. We love his podcast. We love the comic book man. Every, his, you know, we just, love him. Just him in general, yeah. So Jay and Silent Bob reboot. The trailer dropped at San Diego Comic-Con. Chris, so let's talk about this. Trailer, you and I were waiting for this trailer. This was like one of the few things at San Diego that we were actually hyped for. And we're talking about, you know, Marvel was there. They had a bunch of like different companies for TV shows. But you and I were like pretty enthused to see this Jay and Silent Bob reboot trailer, which drops in theaters October 15th and the 17th. Apparently they could not get the 16th. I have no idea. So, Crystal, what did you think of this trailer? I'm pretty hyped, but. There's always a but. I know, right? I'm a little, I'm a little reserved. I don't want to get too hyped for it because it has been a long time since we have seen James and Bob on the big screen. Do you remember the last um, time? I can't remember the last time. Two thousand and six, I believe. Oh, Clerks God. two. Damn. And the That's last a long time. and the last time they had a movie. 2001, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. When you and I were like Shit. little kids. Yeah, I was like 11. I was like 5. Um, in 2001, you were not 5, <laughs> Patrick. You're older than me. Hey, whoa, whoa. Come on, get back on the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm excited, but I'm a little reserved. Something... Seems a little like something's missing for me in this trailer. There are some definite funny moments, like you know the first scene. You see the you see the the the, the SWAT guy and uh, the guy from Ant Man. Yes, uh, David uh, Demachlion. We almost met him if he didn't cancel at a convention. And he's like, he played Come Kurt and Ant Man. Up, motherfuckers! And here comes Jay holding weed. And he drops it, and he drops his pan, he tucks in his junk, and he does that iconic pose. <laughs> well, yeah, because they, like, they told him to drop the plant, or drop the plants, but he thought pants. And I was like, what the hell, Jay? <laughs> and he's like, this motherfucker has no dick. He has a dick and dick. <laughs> that cracked me up when they were talking about that, and he's like, he's got, he's got none. He's like, yes, he does. He just got tucked in. He's like so... 
they're just they're just completely they're completely like baffled. They're astonished. What the hell's this guy's problem? Like what? <laughs> it was pretty um, funny. It was very very funny. But I I kind of like how uh, and I believe you said this. Yes, no, you did. Say, I'm, I'm gonna give you credit. You did say this. Thank you, thank you, you thank you. Cap- well, let me finish what I'm gonna say first. We take credit. Jeez. Um, you said once that Kevin Smith kind of started the whole universe where everyone else. Yes. And it's kind of nice to see everyone come back. We're going to see Matt Dillon, Matt Dillon, not Damon, Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon's there um, too. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get Ben Affleck. We're going to get Rosario Dawson, um, James Vanderbeek. I mean, like, you're, you're, you're seeing, you're seeing all of these people that have been in the movie before come back. And I think that is so cool that Kevin was able to get a bunch of people to do cameos, but also get some new people that we've never seen before, like Chris Hemsworth, his daughter, Harley Quinn Smith is going to be in it. Um, I mean, this movie looks epic. You want me to tell you who's on this movie? I actually did a shot by shot. I can tell you exactly who's in this trailer. Tell me. All right, so in the beginning, you have Donnell Rawlings, who's a comedian. That's the one that's talking to David DiMaggio, who played Kurt from Ant-Man, the guy who talks about Bobby Yaga in the franchise. And then you have Jason Lee, which played uh, Brody, you know. And then you have Melissa, yes. uh, Melissa. Uh, well, people should know Jason Lee, right? I mean, he played Brody in, um, I believe he played Brody in Chasing Amy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did he play it also in Mulrats? I swear that was the same fucking character. I don't know. Well, I, I don't think know. so. I think so. I, we have to catch up on our Kevin Smith view askew averse. But uh, also uh, Melissa Bonet, who plays Supergirl in the CW. You have Val uh-huh. Kilmer, one of three Batmans that are supposed to be in this in this film. You have Joe uh, Magnello from, uh, uh-huh. I guess, True Blood Magic Mike. You have Craig Robinson from The Office and Zachary Murray make a porno. And then yep. you also have Justin Long from the Zachary Murray make a porno Tusk. You have Shannon Elizabeth, who played Justice in Strikes Back, Jane's on Bob Strikes Back. She's reprising her role in this one. You also have, like Chris said, Harley Quinn Smith. I bet you didn't catch this one, Chris. Dan Fogler is in this from Fantastic Beast and Fanboys. I did not. Also, another name, uh, hold on here, is Fred uh, Amirson. He played uh, a really weird, creepy European guy in Road Trip when they were going underneath in the in the dark tunnel during the subway and also he was in SNL. Also you have Brian O'Halloran who's played Dante from Clerks. You also have Matt Damon. You have Ben Affleck reprising his role as Holden from Chasing Amy. You also have Adam Brody, Carissa, from the OC. And oh, that's right. he also was in um Yoga Hosers Shazam. and Shazam. He was extremely buff in that. I believe that he actually worked out for that. <laughs> You also have uh, Chris Hemsworth, Chris said Thor, Rosario Dawson, who played, uh, I don't remember her character's name, but she was in Clerks 2. And then you have Method Man and Red Man also, oh, yeah. and then you have uh, Q from Practical Jokers. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Chris said earlier, Dawson Creek himself, uh, Jason Vanderbeek, and then you have American Pie's Jason Biggs, and then... Chong from Cheech and Chong uh, rounds out the trailer. Look at all those cameos. And I believe that Kevin was blowing up all over his Instagram who was in this movie. So we wouldn't be too surprised. And I don't even think he's he's finished out. Because we know there's one more Batman. Uh, wasn't it James Vanderbeek? Yeah, what I call him? Jason. Oh, whatever. James Jason. Whatever, man. James Vanderbeek. Is that better? Man. I should just be like Dawson's Creek. Yeah, but so a lot of them have made cameos or been in previous films. Some of them are brand new. So yeah, Kevin's paid off all this work that he's been doing with his podcast, directing CW shows, previous movies from his career. They, so there's a lot of cameos and there's pro, uh, excuse me, there's probably a lot more that have not been shared yet. And I'm sure we will see it in maybe another trailer or when we actually see the film. But um, I'll go ahead and give my reaction. I thought the highlight was the beginning because that was so ridiculous that I did not expect that that would be the first uh, scene of Jay coming out with plants and then pulling out his pants doing that throwback to uh, Clerks <laughs> 2. And then uh, just it's just so – it's just so – like my nostalgia – like, hi, I, I was just, like, in, in awe seeing Jay and Silent Bob. Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes reprising their roles. And Kevin, I was like, man, Kevin's going to look so different now that he that he's lost all the weight, you know, since he had that heart attack. But he really doesn't look that different, to be honest with you, with that big coat. So, 
I like the trailer because I just want to go on another ride with, you know, Kevin Smith's, uh, I, you know, I don't really think that Kevin, a lot of people say that Kevin's washed up or he's, you know, he just doesn't really challenge himself anymore. But, you know, a lot of people forget that Kevin Smith was actually and still is a brilliant filmmaker. You know, he's just he's just in a comfortable groove now with his career. But it's nice to see him go back to those what I refer to his like golden his golden years where he was fresh, young director and he was you know, popping out clerks, small rats, chasing Amy, dogma. So to see him come back to two characters that he's created that have been a huge part of pop culture, I am excited. Also with the possibility that we get some pops, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? But well, spe- the, the the funny thing about it is I love their their little play on Comic Con. It's called Chronic. Yeah. But yeah. it's the San Diego kind of like setup and it says Hollywood instead of San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> I did like the trailer a lot. I'm just uh I'm 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 really excited about Jay becoming a father as we see Justice and him, you know, had a love child, which is played by Kevin Smith star, Harley Quinn. So that part is interesting. I'm just hoping that this film lives up to the hype because all I saw was just a bunch of montages of the film. So it's really hard to kind of grasp exactly what's going on besides the fact that they're rebooting J- uh, Blunt Man and Chronic and this time he's going to have his daughter in play. But uh, not really got much of a glimpse of Jay, full Jay. Got a lot of Silent Bob in full Silent Bob because he doesn't really talk. But I like this trailer, especially the fact that it was a red band, so it kind of gave me an idea of what to expect, and I'm glad that this film is still rated R. So, I mean, overall, I like the trailer. It's not the greatest trailer, I'll be 100% honest with you. It's not the greatest trailer I've seen, but it's satisfying, because it gives me just what I want. Like Chris was saying, familiar faces returning as iconic characters from his universe or his previous films, and then new people he's worked with, like Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, Fat Thor's in... A Jay and Silent Bob movie. A Kevin Smith flick. Can you believe that? That, that is crazy. So, yeah, that's that's basically, you know, how I would sum it up. But also, real quick, the last part that I really like is that they named uh, Jay's daughter Millennium Falcon, basically. <laughs> I, love the, I love the Star Wars references are still alive and stuff like that. Maybe we get a J.J. Abrams cameo. That would be priceless. Can you imagine that? That would be funny. But overall, I love this trailer to an extent. I mean, like I said in the beginning, like I'm super hyped, but I'm gonna go in a little reserved and not get too crazy. Cause you know how I get when I get too crazy and I yeah. expect too much. Yeah, you know, I know, I know. Well, let me ask you: Does this feel vintage, Kevin Smith, to you? Like your honest opinion: Does this feel vintage, Kevin Smith, to you? Um, a little bit. Now you have concerns as much as I do. That you know, we've waited a long time for this film. You're hoping that this is gonna deliver. Yeah, yeah, that that's what I'm hoping to, but I think so. I'm just hoping that the cameos don't overshadow the film. That's my biggest concern, but, you know, at the end of the day, we like Kevin Smith, and I feel like Kevin Smith's going to do enough to wet the beak for us and be like, you know, this is a pretty damn good flick, which I, I think it's actually, I'm surprised it wasn't on either one of our mentions or anticipated lists. Isn't that funny? That is actually really funny. But uh, that concludes Jay and Silent Bob Reboot San Diego Comic Con trailer. Let us know what you guys think because anytime you're listening to this, just hashtag TOC Movies. You can also add us. And just let us know what you guys are thinking as we're uh, talking about this as you're listening to the episode. I wonder if anybody listening to this actually likes Kevin Smith as much as we do. You ever wonder that? Like when we talk about things, like do people do people like his, the same stuff that we like? I don't know. I always wonder I, that. I hope so. I hope so. I'm like, I hope that, you know, if not, you know, they're not listening to our podcast. Also, I forgot to mention is that at the end of the trailer, which I'll link in the description of this episode, they're doing some type of tour where you can pay to watch the movie with them. I don't know if you've seen this, Carissa, but I looked and there's like, this is kind of a, kind of like, oh man, what the hell? Like they're doing like four or five shows in Arizona. (laughs) Shut up. I'm not even kidding. They're doing some at Stand Up Live in Phoenix. They're doing one in the California area that I'm close to is, is Los Angeles. But yeah, they're doing this thing where you can... You can watch the movie with them. I think they, I think they might do a Q and A, but they have like meet and greet packages as well. But yeah, that, that, I think that's pretty cool. And you know, obviously, if you really want to meet them that badly and see the movie with them, you can. So definitely click on that link. I think Chris is like, ooh, I might want to do that because we've never met Jason Mewes. We've met Kevin Smith, have not met Jason Mewes, and he's on the top of our list to meet. So that concludes 
movies, let's move over to anime, which I'm really excited about because I feel like we don't do enough anime. It's one of the few things that I'm like, we we incorporate it this year since we love anime now and we haven't really tackled much. We recently did a Gritsko season one, which you guys got to watch that if you haven't. We, I can't wait to start season two, Chris. I've been waiting to do um, a Gretzko. So we're going to do... So I know, so am I. So we're going to do season one. Well, I think it's... I'm hoping that there's more seasons, but Rising of the Shield Hero. And the synopsis for this one is is a really cool twist, which really kind of like caught my attention, especially with Chris's attention as well with the show, because it's so unique. So the synopsis for The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 1, which I hope they get more seasons, is four heroes are summoned from different worlds to fight for the Melomark Kingdom against waves of destruction. They consist of a spear hero, a bow hero, a sword hero, and a shield hero. Yes, you heard that correctly. Shield hero. So, like any review we do, it's always spoiler-free section, then spoiler section, final thoughts, and rating. So, Krissa, The Rising of the Shield Hero. Take it away. The Rising of the Shield Hero spoiler-free review. I loved this show. The first episode pulled me in because of our, our main character, Nafumi, I think that's, I'm saying his name right. Nafumi Iwatani. Yes. He is the underdog that you root for. Like Patrick said in the synopsis, he is one of the four legendary heroes. Take a and guess. It's, what was that? <laughs> Take a guess which hero he is. <laughs> He's the shield hero. He's the shield hero. And his journey is definitely an, an interesting one, and no pun intended, but this is his story and his rise to be the shield hero. And he's faced with so many different obstacles and setbacks, and you really do relate to the character when you're trying to do something and the world is against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I definitely loved how he came upon his two main team members and third occasional team members. I thought that that was very organic. And I thought the show to be very, very Talk about, excuse me. Very, very interesting and engaging. And after, I'm like, it's one of those shows where you want to binge the whole thing because yes. you want to know what's going to happen to him next. Yes. And how are they going to fuck him over again? Oh you know wow! What I mean? Yes. It's kind of like, but it's true. It's it's kind of like, oh man, things are going good. Things are going good. Son of a bitch! How can they do that to him? But yeah, you're still in, in spoiler free end, section. But in the end, it's worth it. Hmm. In the end, it was such a good story that it left me wanting them to fast track to season two, like right now. Like I need to know the next stage in the story. Like I, I want to know. All right, is that uh, does that conclude the spoiler free section review? I think so. All right, so for me, the rising of the shield here. I've heard a lot of good things about this show. It's always popping up on my Funimation. You know one of the new shows to check out i know it's widely hailed i know a lot of people have talked to us about this show so i got my chance to tune in and check it out and i just expected to kind of watch a few episodes you know and then next you know i'm getting pulled into this story because i really like uh nafumi i really feel bad for this guy without really spoiling it is that this show truly understands you know in storytelling wise to tell the story of somebody becoming a hero like i think that we're so used to marvel films superhero films and they kind of have an idea of how they tell a hero story but i feel like the rising of the shield heroes is extremely unique in the way they approached it because you know not for me you know he's a shield hero he's one of the four heroes summoned to help you know save the melomark uh melomark excuse me uh kingdom but he doesn't get the same treatment I'll just say, compared to the other heroes. And it's kind of a journey for him as a person and a hero to kind of find himself. So naturally, a character-driven story, you know, it's got my attention. So, you know, I started watching it and then I just binged through it like crazy. Now, Krista finished it before me because she had some free time and then I'm like, oh, I got to catch up. But 
not only I don't really like to binge as much because I feel like you don't always grasp all the great little details, the intricates of the story. But this one I had no choice because Chris is already ahead of me, and plus I really love this story. So I immediately, you know, I binged it, and I want a second season just as much as Chris. But it's not just not for me that I, I got invested in. There's other characters as well, like Raftilia. You got Philo. You have uh, Melty. Those are some of the characters in the show that I I actually liked a lot too. And they each kind of get their 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 stories as well. You know, they kind of weave with Nafami's. But this is something I've never seen in a hero storyline. And that's something probably credited to how well I think anime has done some wonders for my like taste and like stories and stuff because anime has done some great things. If you're not in an anime, you need to get an anime. Don't be like Chris and I that waited like a long time. Like everyone else was ahead of us. I'm like, why weren't we watching this long time ago but i really like the rising of the shield hero it's got action it's got great storylines it has great characters but it also has something that something i recently saw did not really have as an ingredient which is emotion and heart which i really like in storylines and i especially like to root for characters that are having quite an uphill battle in their storylines especially for nafami he's had nothing but an uphill battle and that's all i will say about that for my spoiler free section Alright. I know, you were like, what the hell? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so if you have not seen The Rising of the Shield Hero, you can definitely watch it. I believe it's on Funimation. I don't know why. It's weird, because Chris and I are like one of the few people that have Funimation. Everyone has Crunchyroll. I'm, I'm assuming it's on Crunchyroll it as well. It is on Crunchyroll. Yeah, because I have that. I have Crunchyroll as well, but I watch more Funimation. I would recommend, if you're going to listen to this review, definitely do the dub version, because that's the that's the version that Chris and I watch. But you can still you watch this. To. You don't have to, but I feel like it would make more sense because it's a little bit we different. We like it. We like it, Doc. Yeah. If you have not seen it, go watch and then come back. If not, you have been warned. We are entering spoiler section. Three seconds. And Chris will just start spoiling away. She doesn't care what you think. She's just going to spoil away. Three, two, one. You've been warned. I always like okay. cut that out. You know that, right? Why? Why do you cut I'm it kidding. Out? I won't cut that. I, I That's swear. So depressing. You tell me I count down every time, and you cut me out. A recent review that we did with with some people, I actually cut that out. <gasps> Bastard. Time time constraints. It wasn't. It was out of my control. Oh fuck off. Okay. Anyways, you're not been warned. We're in the spoiler free section. You'll probably cut that too, won't you? Okay. So to sum it up, I, I think the thing that really, really intrigued me with with this show is is the beginning. Um, there was a word Patrick uh, was really bothered by in the first episode, and I had to look it up, and I don't remember what the word is. But pretty much it's a Japanese term for somebody who's really into video games or computers. Oh, yeah, there's a certain word that I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm watching this the whole time. I'm like, what is that? I don't even remember the word. It was so weird. He, he was so fixated on the word. He couldn't get past the word, so I had to look it up. But I, I, I did not tell you until now. So I, I well, can't remember the exact word, but that's what it meant. So pretty much now for me is this 20-year-old college kid. He's in the library. And, and this is what really intrigues me because I kind of wish it would happen to me one day. He A bunch of books fall. <laughs> That's what you want. You want to be toppled by books. <laughs> and he picks one up, and it's like the four cardinal heroes. He opens it up. He's like, there's the shield hero. There's the spear hero. There's the uh, bow hero. And then he's like, then he turns it. There's the shield. Nobody wants to be a shield pages, hero. The pages are blank. And then he gets sucked into the book. Jumanji. Yes! <laughs> it was Juma- It felt just like Jumanji. Okay, okay. Well, I thought it was cool. Shut up. Anyway, it's cool, but so, I'm just saying, like, remember when Jumanji, the same thing? I'm like, oh, hell, though. At least this is a lot. Well, is this worse than Jumanji? <laughs> is this better than Jumanji or worse than Jumanji? So, so he gets pulled into this into this other world, and it finds out that he is one of the cardinal heroes, the shield hero, which nobody likes the shield hero, and he's, quote, unquote, the least powerful hero. Well, let me ask right? you, before you get more in this review, if you had to choose to be which hero, which would you choose? Prior to watching this, shield hero, spear hero, sword hero, or bow hero, what are you going to choose? Um, I always thought bows are really cool, so I would choose the bow hero. But oh. that's before 
knowing anything about the show. Okay, Katniss, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Lord of the Rings, but okay. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Enough, let's so go. <laughs> he is one of the four cardinal heroes. Now, to sum it up, he is one of four heroes, as I just said, and they, after talking to the other heroes, they're a little, the way they're receptive to the um, people that summon them, they kind of come off as douchebags and like non-likable characters right away. Exactly. Um, requesting, requesting money to save, uh, what's the place called? Oh, uh, Mel, Mel Remark. Mel and Mark, and you better ob- abide our request. And he's kind of like, what are you guys talking about? And it's kind of like they already are used to, they think they're really in a video game like Jumanji. Oh, you're talking about the where, the, the, the spear hero, the sword hero, and the, and the yes. Um, uh, yes. bow hero, right? Yeah, the, I was like, yes. what the hell's wrong with these guys? Like, this is, what yes. the hell? Like, 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 right off the bat, like, they're not taking this serious. And they're thinking they're really in a video game. To where Nafumi knows something isn't right. So after talking to one another, they realize that they are all from Japan, but different universes. Because they can't agree on who's president and who's on the yen and who won World War II. And um, they all find out that they're all from Japan, just different timelines or different universes in a sense. So the thing that really intrigued me is they have to team up and there are so many people and, and the people of Mel and Mark get to choose which hero they want to team up with. And nobody wants to team up with Mel for me. Yeah. The shield hero is apparently like blasphemy. I don't know. Yes. Really, yeah. That's what intrigued and, me too. I was like, what the hell's that? What's why is everyone mad yeah. at the shield hero? And, and finally one girl steps up and says, I'll do it. Her name is mine. mine. Yeah. Oh. And that bitch, she butters him up, and she's playing dumb and damsel in distress, and then she sets him up. Yeah, she's very and conniving. What she what she accuses him of? I've actually saw some articles that um, Funimation got some backlash for because she accused him of trying to rape her. Well, it's not Funimation's. I mean, that's the studio in Japan that came but, up, Or that could have been the light novel. Like, it, but it, it's like, but how can you put something like that out? Anyways. Um, so, right off the bat, Nafumi is framed. He loses everything. Each hero gets a certain amount of money. He lost his money. He lost all his gear he bought with the money. And now everyone thinks that he's a, a rapist. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's horrible. And you're a shield hero. <laughs> and he has no idea what's going on, you know? It's kind of like everyone, the whole world turned against him. And he didn't do anything wrong. So right right off the bat, you feel sorry for this guy. It's like, what is everyone's problem? Why are they all gaining up on him? And it, it's interesting to see his, his rise, no pun intended, to becoming a hero. He understands, after some character development, of what it means to be a hero. And he did. He didn't get the easy path. He had to work towards it. Everything he got, he had to work hard for. To the point where he had to buy a slave to have somebody in his party, with, which ended up being his his sword. He's not allowed to fight. Yeah. It, the, it, only, <laughs> the only thing he can use to fight is his shield. If he touches a sword... He can't do it. Isn't that and crazy? Like, yes. Yeah, like, like well, what's the point? Not only are you summoned from your own world to help these people out who don't even want you there, who turn on you, and everyone thinks that you're a horrible person and after you just blew all your money on somebody who you thought was legit, and then on top of that, you can't even use a sword. You just have to use your shield, so you really are only doing defense. You have no offense. So yeah, Chris, yeah. you're talking about when, she, when he bought the slave, which would end up being Raftalia's character. Yeah, Raftalia. that was... Yeah, Raftalia. That was horrible watching. I was like, damn, that's what you gotta resort to to be able to have some allies, and then you know, not I, I'm I don't want to cut you off anymore, but Nafumi's attitude with after all those events is so traumatic. I don't blame him for being, you know, kind of cold and not wanting to talk to anybody. I wouldn't trust anybody either. No, exactly. And I love the relationship with him and Raftalia. Raftalia is a demi human, and she's a young child, and she's quote unquote his slave. But it becomes more than that 
their companions and she believes in him. And I think she brings out a soft side to Nafumi that the rest of the world does not see. She sees something and the rest of the world sees something else, but who she sees is who he really is. Yeah, not what everyone and perceives. Exactly. And then, you know, he, he comes across his next quote unquote slave, Philo, which she's like this magical bird that can transform from a little girl to this giant bird. Yeah, she's like a special but, breed, right? That can do that. But, not not all of them can a, do it. Yes, but she's a special one. And so you have Philo, you have Raftalia. And they both adore Master Nafumi, and they both kind of fight for his uh, his attention, which just makes me kind of laugh. It's funny. Um, they get jealous of one another. But it's so what? interesting to see Nafumi's battle to this because even though the rest of his the rest of his the rest of the, of the three cardinal heroes are leveling up, they're getting stronger. In reality, Nafumi is the one. That is actually getting stronger, even though he's not the same level as everyone else, because they think they're off saving the world, but they're actually creating more problems in this world. Yes, that was that was that was sheer brilliance how they displayed how those guys thought the whole time that they were saving, like liberating, uh, yeah, yeah, liberating a, a certain town, which he you know which the bow hero abandoned, and then the other one trying to. Um, the spear hero who mine the one who turned on Nafumi would really wanted to just hang out with the spear hero. She was just trying to set up uh, Nafumi. She ends up, you know, just basically preying on the spear hero's lack of uh, intelligence. I'll just say, like his awareness yeah. to actually think. And he helps this one village out by giving them a sacred plant, which apparently in their own lore is actually horrible for them. But yet they believed it because it was the spear hero, and not the shield hero. And then. So Nafumi had to go help help that town out after they were deserted. He had to go help that other town out with all those those dangerous plants. It's like what the what the hell is wrong with all these people? He's the true hero. And so I think with the, I think the thing that really kind of makes the, the the story click is you get such great character development with Nafumi, but it's also kind of a a message in life. The people that get everything handed to them. It's frustrating when you have to work harder than somebody else. Amen. But, Preach. But but in the end, your path is going to be brighter than theirs because you weren't handed everything. You had to build yourself up from the ground and you prevail and you're a stronger person because of that. And I think that's why I love this show so much is it's relatable, even though this is, we're talking about dark fantasy stuff here, it's relatable to life. Just hopefully you don't buy slaves. So slaves, not, slaves aren't cool. But I definitely love the show. And like I said, it was fun. It was action-packed, great character development. Um, it left me wanting more at the end of season one. And the biggest thing is, no pun intended, but this is the rise of the S.H.I.E.L.D. hero. Now for me, is the true hero. Wow, Chris. You, you know this is just a show right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> For my uh, spoiler section review, yeah, so Chris really highlighted a lot of points that I'll just touch up on. So what what really captivated my interest into the show was, I'm like, why is it called Rising of the Shield? I want to be just called the Rise of the Shield here. It's the Rising of the Shield here because Nafumi Iwatani, a.k.a. the Shield hero that nobody likes, he's given the worst hero title. I mean, he can't do defense, or he can't do, excuse me, offense. He can only do defense. And he has all these trials and tribulations. He has all these setbacks, all these people that want him to fail. And yet he continues to succeed from when he first shows up. He's like, what the hell's going on? I mean, he gets just respected by the king who doesn't like they all the other heroes introduce themselves. The bow hero, the, the spear hero, the sword hero. And then he's like, the king just starts talking. He's like, wait, what about me? I'm, I'm you know, I'm the shield hero. And it's like, okay, immediately I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like. They need these guys. They summon them. Why are they disrespecting this one guy? And then, you know, for him getting, you know, swindled by mine and then getting betrayed by her after he spent all that money on gear to be accused of a crime that is so heinous, uh, rape that, you know, I, I was, I felt for him. Like, I, I really felt, I was like, what the hell is going on? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, mine is such, a interesting character because she's so good at twisting and being conniving and just kind of like basically curating her own bullshit, her own lies 
to the benefit of her and the one that she really likes, which is the spear hero who's completely oblivious. He's a completely moronic, doesn't even think. And, you know, when he gets accused of that crime, you know, immediately the other three heroes don't even think about reason. They don't think about maybe doing an investigation. No one thinks about seeing if these are true. They just immediately just think the worst of him and they kind of cast him away and you know he Nafim, he's a really nice guy he's he's a likable character he seems like he's the guy that you want on your side but you know all this stuff you know just the beginning this is just the beginning kind of turns him into this cold distant guy who's like i don't want to deal with anybody i don't even want to save any of you guys you guys are all jerks and he becomes the person that's not even recognizable from the beginning. And then like Chris was saying, he ends up having to buy a slave because nobody wants to be in his party because everyone, you know, word spreads around that he's a horrible person and he has to get the slave and he ends up choosing one. That's not really like demonic. Cause like when he's walking around trying to buy those slaves, he buys one that looks like she's almost on her deathbed, which is Raftilia. And I liked how they built that relationship because first he's like, she's just going to be my weapon so I can survive. And she's like, I'm just, I'm just a slave. But then slowly they kind of build this trust through learning how to help one another. He's the defense. She's the offense. And that one part where, you know, they, they go into this cave and they almost die. And, you know, he's like, you gotta, you gotta do this, you know, and she's having flashbacks because we get a little bit of her storyline, what happened to her, why she became a slave and why she's, you know, kind of afraid with people. And then, the, you know, that that the whole storyline plays out and then they end up becoming, you know, this one-two, you know, combo punch here and, uh, you know, knockout combo. And I love that. So immediately I'm like, wow, I like, you know, I'm watching somebody who I think, like Chris said, we can all relate to somebody who's, who has to work harder than everyone else, who has to struggle more than anybody else, who has to continue to fight for his name, for his honor, Despite what the world perceives him as to be as a no good person, he's a horrible person, he's never going to mount anything, and he's, you know, stay away from him. But he has to fight for his reputation, and he constantly, and Chris will tell you this, constantly in the show, it's continually losing. Like, to the point where I'm like, I'm getting more and more hyped in the show, I'm like, no way Nafumi's losing again. And then he loses, and he, he keeps getting himself in a rut, and then, you know, eventually... You know, he starts winning little battles by showing the type of hero that he is by slowly doing the grunt work. While the other heroes had it easy, they got, they got, you know, they got paid handsomely. You know, the, the kingdom would give them money each month and they got paid handsomely. They got to do whatever they want. He couldn't do anything because the king and mine, because mine is actually the princess to the king. You know, they were in cohorts with this church to basically destroy the shield hero and worship the other three heroes. Like that storyline with the religion was, was incredibly insane that I'm like, why didn't they just worship all four? So I just love Nafami's rise because he slowly got to that point where people were like, he's not a bad guy. He's a great hero. He's better than the other three heroes. And he slowly, you know, gained the trust and then added a new ally. He added Philo, which is Bird, which he bought from the slave uh, slave trader as well, which turned to be really good for him. And then he ends up saving a young girl who's been taken care of by these other Philos. And it turns out she's the other princess to the king. And she's mine's sister, but she's not like them. She sees Nafumi for who he is, but then that whole trials and tribulations of him trying to, you know, stay away from me because he doesn't believe that she's good. She's just playing him. Like that really, that really got me. It's like you're so sad. Yeah, like this character, this emotion that you you can't ever feel happy. You can't even feel secure. You're always insecure. You're always on your toes. You're always worried. You're paranoid that nobody actually cares about you, that all of them want to see you be destroyed. So that was what really sold me. So just watching him rise to those ranks, you know, all pun intended here on this end, that was a journey. And it was such an emotional journey that I felt everything that he felt, which I thought was what I what I always want in a movie or, or a film, you know, a movie, a film, whatever, TV series, anime, whatever I'm watching that's some form of entertainment of a story, I want to be emotionally invested. And this show delivers on all cylinders. You guys got to watch this. And that is it for my spoiler section review. I wasn't supposed to talk that much, but I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So let's do final thoughts. Rain. Let's wrap this up because we got it. We still got a bunch of content. So, final thoughts, it's definitely a show you gotta watch. It, like I said, it's, 
It's fun. It's, it's action packed. Um, it's going to leave you at the edge of your seat. Um, and rating for me for the show is a 95. Wow. So for me, if you're looking for a story that is something in the, in the vein of superheroes, but with a completely different twist, with a more grounded, gritty approach, Rising of the Shield Heroes got you. Obviously, it's in a different world, so it's not completely gritty, but in the sense of the story-wise, it is. Not for me, Iwatani, the Shield Hero. This is a series you need to watch. This is some of the best storytelling I've seen this year. I can see why everyone watched this ahead of us and told us to watch it. I can't wait for season two. Damn it, they better make one out. I can, I'm, all, I'm over here thinking about season two because I want it so badly. So I would definitely rate this actually as well a 95 because I think this is near perfect and... You know, Chris and I were both talking about this show for a long time. You know, as we were watching, we're like, I can't wait to review it. So, not bad, Chris. I mean, this is near perfect series for both you and I. And I loved a lot of other anime series I've seen. I've seen My Hero Academia. I've seen Sword Art Online. And we're going to end up reviewing those two shows. But yeah, like, this is a show that kind of like, kind of like, breeze right through them in a way and kind of like no you're going to be you're going to be my new favorite this is going to be your new favorite show so i was like wow i really love this show me too <laughs> all right chris has calmed down since then but that is it for anime we're going to move over to one of our segments which is take a stroll down superheroes alley and we're going to check out another trailer from san diego comic-con this year we're going to basically cover san diego comic-con as much as we can Throughout these next several episodes. Because there's just so much stuff. I cannot believe. I don't even imagine Chris. If you and I were doing this full time. How the hell we would do this. Just as a two man team. Like it's insane. The amount of content that. That San Diego um, Comic Con. I think if we were doing this full time. And like we didn't have to work a real job. <laughs> and this was our job. We would get content out a lot faster. Well, my real job is to be a shield hero. <laughs> oh okay. Calm down. I hope I, I'm gonna pull a book out today and hope it happens for me. But uh, we're gonna talk about the Harley Quinn, the Harley Quinn animated series dropped a uh, San Diego trailer, and this is gonna star or excuse me, voice Kaylee Cuco is taking on the iconic role of Harley Quinn. Alan Tudyk will be voicing the Joker. This is gonna be arriving on DC Universe. There's no release date. So, Krissa, what did you think of this animated series trailer, Harley Quinn? It's coming. This is a rated R trailer, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't hear them cussing? Did you watch this trailer? Yeah, but I didn't think it was rated R. Yeah, this is going to be an adult-themed series, yeah. I mean, it, it, it looks okay. Um, I'm not that excited for it. What? Honestly. Are you serious? Yeah. It looks so good. When she did the... Like, f- I she- think the only reason I'm going to watch it is because you're going to make me. When she did the floss backwards, I was like, that is hilarious. Because I can't even do the floss at all. I can't even floss my own damn teeth. Hey Patrick, don't, 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 I'm just kidding on that part, am I? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not that, like, hyped for it. Like, I'm not excited about it. Like not- I said, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it to watch it, but there's no hype for it. I mean, the only thing is Poison Ivy. That I'm excited for. Yeah, I'm excited because I've read now, Chris and I are a little different on this. I actually am a pretty big fan of Harley Quinn. I read the comics. I collect the pops. Chris always laughs at me because I, I've, you know, I've read, you know, I'm a big Harley Quinn fan, especially, uh, you know, like I said, I liked, I liked uh, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. I've liked the Arkham Asylum Harley Quinns and I like the comics. So I actually like this trailer a lot. It's just, it's just basically a mashup of different scenes, but just basically shows Harley Quinn kicking people in the nuts, hitting her, hitting people with the mallet, beating people up. But a few characters that kind of got me, pretty excited to watch then i can't wait for this series is we get to see poison ivy which we haven't seen in a while also we're getting batman girls i thought you'd be excited we're getting batman in this series we have too many batmans and then we're also getting alan tudyk voicing the joker now we don't really hear alan tudyk uh, his voice yet but i heard him like do a little grunt that's another intriguing part is seeing alan tudyk which i'm a big fan of because i like him as k2so i also like him in firefly dodgeball and he just recently did the voice of of iago (laughs) in in the uh aladdin live action film which i just saw recently so yeah i I like this trailer i just thought it was interesting because i guess a lot of people are not happy about this because i guess kaylee kuko doesn't have a brooklyn accent and that is a you know what i think that's it i'm not told of her Really? I thought she sounded fine. Nah. 
I like the trailer as well because, like, you get to see a lot of different characters, which I didn't think were going to be in a Harley Quinn film, or, uh, excuse me, a uh, animated series, including, I think you see, like, Clayface, you know, you see Batman, and then I'm like, wow, I, I thought it was just going to basically be a Harley Quinn, like, kind of like, kind of like a in-depth world where it was kind of just mo- mostly just kind of closed guarded with just certain characters, but... I did like the animation looks really cool. I think the animation is going to be something interesting. And I kind of like that she's kind of more adult. So this is not just like something that's going to appeal to everybody. This is more geared toward like kind of Harley Quinn's true roots of the comics. Is She's not re- like dead. Like for instance, a lot of people can t- will argue with you that Deadpool's, you know, he's, he's basically become mainstream enough where he's family friendly, but he's no, he's not. He's intended for mature audiences and same with Harley Quinn. So I, I thought that this trailer was better than the last trailer we saw. It's just I'm kind of wondering what this whole series is about. That's the only problem with this is that you get a lot of, you get a montage of different scenes, but it's just her being up everybody and then her and Harley or uh, excuse me, Poison Ivy having kind of a moment. So I'm like what is this series about? That's the only question I have throughout this whole thing, but overall I'm signing up for this. I guess for Chris she did not really care for this this trailer, excuse me. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, like, I like Harley Quinn. I'm not obsessed with her like you are. I'm not obsessed but, with Harley um, Quinn. Like, what are you talking about? Yes, you are. Oh, my um, God. But, I don't know. I, I think it's the voice that killed it for me. So you say she has to be Brooklyn? Not, I'm also not a big fan of that Kaylee Kuko. Like, I don't watch the Big Bang Theory. You know what's funny? So, I didn't even know. Do you remember that she was on that Eight, eight Simple Rules with John Ritter? Vaguely. You remember that show, right? Vaguely. That I'm was, pretty sure I watched it. I just don't remember. Yeah, it was a good show. It obviously didn't last long, unfortunately, due to John Ritter's uh, untimely death. But, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't watch The Big Bang Theory either. Chris, you know, I think people know. We don't watch Big Bang Theory. I think her voice is okay. I just, uh, I guess they could have just made her have a Brooklyn I think, accent, I guess. I, I don't know. I like Mar- Margot Robbie's voice as Harley Quinn better. I think that's why. Well, she's more traditional, yeah. So this is this is kind of like a departure from what harley quinn normally sounds like but i'm gonna give her a chance i'm gonna watch this chris has no choice i guess as she's saying because we obviously yeah, we, watch it. we review things and i have a feeling that this is going this is going to excuse me uh surprise you i think that you're gonna go oh this is not bad especially when we hear alan tudyk do his joker voice i think that's what's gonna sell you is when we hear how does alan tudyk you know fall in the footsteps of so many brilliant uh you know jokers that we've seen the last several years including mark hamill who i think is like the essential uh, Joker voice. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay, she, you know, Chris, you're so difficult. We don't want to talk about it. You're talking about her, Shield here all day, and then like Harley Quinn, I see a tumbleweed. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> you know, like what is going on here? So we will head out of the alley, and we're gonna move over to some more trailers. This is very trailer heavy. This episode, we're gonna talk about two trailers. First is gonna be Cats. Which I'm hoping Chris has something to talk about because this is more in her alley. This is based off the iconic musical Broadway play. This arrives Christmas. Basically, they say Christmas. It's December 20th. This is coming from director Tom Hooper, who's done Les Mis recently and The King's Speech, which I loved. And this has an ensemble cast. I mean, we got Taylor Swift, Idris Elba, Judy Dench, Ian McKellen, James Corden, Jason Derulo, and Rebel Wilson. So, Carissa, this cast trailer dropped. I got to know what you think, because I got to be honest with you. This was very weird and strange to me. Okay. So, I'm going to give it to you straight. I've never seen cats. I've heard of cats, because, well, not like a cat, but you know what I mean? Like, I've heard of cats musical. It's very mainstream. It, it, uh, well, it's actually not that mainstream as much as it used to be. I remember growing up, it was I, I knew all about Cats. Like, I didn't know anything about the show, but I've heard of Cats. Like, they used to advertise it. It was going to be on stage somewhere. I'm like, what is Cats about? I know it's very iconic. So, I don't know what it's about, honestly. To be honest, honest I have no idea what, what it's about. I do know that it looks good. But it looks creepy. It looks creepy good. Um, I think the way they look is what it's what creeps me out. It's very I don't know. it's very bizarre. I, I couldn't stop staring at them. I'm like, 
what is this? Like, I kept looking on, like, the design not, of the cats is not weird. Not in a good way, though. It's like, what am I looking at is, is how I felt. Is it as bad I as Sonic? the reason why is they're not very hairy cats. It oh. kind of just looks like they're body suits, and there's just heavy CGI, and you see their face, but their face looks human. Is it like Sonic? Yeah. Yes. Okay, is it worse than Sonic? What's worse, Sonic or cats? Well, there's a lot of them, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still think Sonic is worse. Because I, I don't know anything about cats, so it doesn't bother bother me as much versus Sonic. But, yeah, it's just really I weird looking design. I think, I think, I'm trying to remember. I think what the storyline is for cats is there are different kinds of cat species, right? Well, yeah, I mean, there's different, yeah, with all the different actors, and they all each have a different breed of a cat, yeah. And I think there's some sort of, like, grand ball that happens, and they pick somebody to be, like, the honor of something. I don't know specifics. I think I'm just kind of pulling out of my ass. Well, we'll, just, we'll just, let's just talk about just the trailer in general. Let's just, yeah, because I know, yeah. I'm going to watch it. Hello, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, that's um, right. I forgot to mention her. Yeah, she's in this, too. She's singing through the whole trailer. Yeah, yeah. If you had me I fooled, I know the song, but I want the song because I love Jennifer Hudson. I thought she was the main character. That woman can sing. Oh my goodness! Every time she opens her voice, it's like perfect pitch every time. It's like effortless for her. Yeah, and Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, like just let's just touch a little bit. I, yeah, I couldn't take my eyes off. The first time I watched, I'm like, "What is this? This is very strange, bizarre. It's weird looking. The cat design." But and then again, I have no knowledge of it, so I'm kind of just going, "Okay." So I'll have to look at some photos. But I saw some people commenting that that this looks really weird because I guess with the the musical version on Broadway, like they put more hair on the cats, which might might be reason why we're all kind of looking at it going, "What is that?" And, uh, you know, the cast is what's really, is really intriguing me to go watch this immediately when it comes out because I see Idris Elba, I see Elon McKellen, I see Judy Dench, I even, like I said, Jennifer Hudson as well. I'm like, huh. I mean, all these, they have a huge ensemble cast. There has to be a reason why they all join. I know that this is a big musical or was. So I'm like, I gotta go watch it, but I don't know what the hell's going on in the story except. Something about this one particular cat has an opportunity to change her life, one chance or something, as they say, and it's just... See, I told you, I told you, that there's something to do with some grand event, and they pick one cat. And I think the the one, uh, I think the actress name is um, Francesca Haywood, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's is, her is, first film, right? Is, is going to be our main character, and I think she's the one that's selected. Yeah, well, I mean, visually, I mean, visually, this looks incredible. This is spectacular. Yeah. Like the the sets, the sets and look really you, cool. Um, yes, the the sets are really cool, and I believe this is a musical from um, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, I'm I'm showing up to this film because of of the you know just on paper, Tom Hooper who did King Speech, did Les Mis. Those are great films. I really love King Speech. And then I saw in the trailer they also mentioned that they're getting the choreographer of Hamilton, which I know is a oh. huge, huge musical. Chris and I haven't had a chance to see it, but we know. I We're heard gonna all, be seeing it soon. Just I heard so you know. Chris loves musicals, so I hear, I've already heard almost all the Hamilton songs already. I just need to watch it. So, <laughs> and Hamilton, you know, it's it's really cool how they how you know the the way they did that. So yeah, those two sign me up, and then the cast signs me up. But just visually, like, everything looks cool. It's just those cat design looks weird. So I have a feeling that – I also have this feeling, like, in the trailers that things aren't really great in this world, too. Like, everyone seems to be poor. I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting that correct. I don't know. It just seems like it's kind of like a coming-of-age story, I guess. But just just based off the trailer, I'm going to watch it just because of the fact that, all pun intended, you know, my curiosity of it. Like, you know, I got a cat's curiosity of what the hell's going on. You know, why do these, you because know, like, are, like, I don't know, I have this feeling, like, are they really humans, but they, someone has imagines they're all cats? I have no idea what this is. I just need to see it. <laughs> That's what I've learned, is that if I don't understand something, just go watch it. <laughs> I mean, you're, I knew this would be more up your alley with this trailer, regardless if you know anything about cats. You just like musicals in general, so I know that this I is do, more. And that, I'm telling you that, that opening song, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm about to download it right now. 
I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, there's some shots when they like they were introducing the cast, and there's that one shot of the main actress where she kind of like does a spin, does like a thumbs, like a like an art, like a Rob Van Dam thumbs, like toward her, and I'm like. Yeah, lady, I don't, I don't know who you are. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, I just want to know what the hell's going on. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, like, what is, you know, when I first saw the trailer, I've seen it a few times, but the first time I saw it, I was gonna text you like, what the hell is this, Chris? Like, because I, I had no idea what it is, but even though I don't understand it, I kind of want to watch it because it looks like it's gonna be something. It's gonna be one of the bigger players for the year, maybe for awards. It, it, it really looks special. That's what, that's what is another thing that comes to mind. This is going to be a special event. So that's it for me on Cats. I, I, I don't really know what else to say on it. It's just, you got to watch this trailer. The cat design, they could tweak if they wanted to, but I was telling Krista that the reason why they probably didn't do the long hair is because they want to make sure you yeah. know who's in this movie. Because besides Chris and I and people who like movies or musicals, like the diehard movie fans, not just the casual people, they don't care about us. They want to get the main audience, the mainstream audience that is going to fuel the box off. So they have to show who's in this damn movie. But should they add a little bit more hair? Yeah, I, I would prefer if they added a little more hair, made it more a little cat-like. I agree with what you just said. Thank you. And we will move over to our other trailer, which I think we could talk about a little bit more because I feel like this trailer, we kind of understand what the hell's going on here. It Chapter 2, the final trailer, which debuted at San Diego Comic-Con. This is coming out September 6th. You know, it's been two years since we've been terrorized by Pennywise. And, uh, Krista, what did you think of the final trailer? Okay, so the first teaser trailer, I was kind of like, oh, this creepy old lady is really weirding me out. Um, this one definitely is a lot better. Um, I feel like they're showing a little too much. Thank you, yes, too as, much. As always, right? Yes. Um, I think... I think they're showing too many of the good parts of the movie. And this is why I hate watching trailers sometimes. Because majority of these trailers nowadays, they give away all the good stuff. Like Godzilla uh, and the King of the Monsters or whatever. King of the Monsters, of, you got it. Whatever. All of the cool stuff we saw glimpses of in the trailer. So when they happened in the movie... I'm like, meh, whatever. Not that cool. We talking about this. With this one. We talking about they showed that giant mammoth that did nothing. Remember, I was like, this is the best part of the damn movie. Do something. Do something. And I kind of feel the same thing with this one. Is we saw a lot of great jump scares that I wish we they didn't show enough of. I wish they showed. I wish they didn't show as much. Yeah, I, um, I agree. Cons- a little goes a long way. Well, considering that they know opinion. that this, this movie's going to do, like, it became one of the, what, the highest grossing radar, like, horror film of all time, or, like, broke records opening weekend. They know this yeah, movie. loved it. Yeah, this movie's going to make tons of money. The hype has already been built. They don't have to show a damn thing. They can just show recycled footage from the first trailer, or the first two trailers, and they don't, and we're still going to be in, in the seats opening weekend. I honestly think they could have cut half of that trailer. And not showed all the good stuff in the fun house or it's disgustingly weird tongue or that Georgie comes back. Um, I think like the first half of the trailer, I think they literally could have left some of it and then showed little glimpses of parts of it. But I think they showed too much in the trailer. All right. Well, let's talk I about it. It looks good. Well, let's talk about the trailer. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, you can go first. Okay. I got a bunch of notes. That's why I wanted to see, pick your brain. Okay. So. It looks like in this trailer, everyone who leaves town gets like a hazy memory of what happened in Derry, especially when per- uh, Pennywise was out and about for his little feeding part every, what, 27 years. And it seems like the Losers Club have been, um, have experienced that. A lot of them who've moved out of town, except Mike, which I'm like, why the hell are you still here? If you know that there's a weird clown or the possibility that that clown could have came back even after all these years, I would have moved the hell out of town. I would have never have came back to dairy. I would have even gave up dairy products because I don't want to deal with this stuff. Patrick. But, <laughs> I'm being serious. Well, I'm lactose intolerant anyway. It doesn't matter. So no, you're not. <laughs> that's what I would say after dealing with Pennywise. Another thing I've noticed is that, you know, one of the cooler parts of this trail, one of the, like, the best parts of this trail is when. Somebody looks like they're drowning in water and they're having a hard time staying afloat. And that isn't that funny? Stay afloat. And um, it was really cool. Like it shows you the perspective of them trying to come up, and they're like, "Oh, help me!" And then like they go down a few more times, and they get up and they see Pennywise. And I'm like, "Get the hell out of there!" Like hell no, hell 
no. I'm like, don't even go near it. Like, as as Pennywise keeps getting, they get closer to Pennywise, I'm like, get away from him. And let me tell you something. I'm a person that has seen Jaws. I love Jaws. I'd be staying in that damn water regardless. I don't even care if there's a shark in there. I see Pennywise, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. And it took me a few times to watch this, Carissa. But did you did you see who's possibly in that water? No. It's Ooh. it's Eddie. Oh. The one that the one that was like so worried that he was gonna get germs and stuff. I, I, I believe that's Eddie in the water. How did wow. he get in that water? I have no clue. What did you think about the water? That that sequence was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, yes, I do agree. I just wish they didn't show it, because I think that would have been way better in the theater, like, kind of experiencing that without, like, having any prior knowledge. Now, another thing I've noticed is, you know, the the look-alike of the kid actors, and they show what the adult actors look, it's spot on. Like, they did a, a good job with the... They did a good job casting. Yeah. Now... Another scene that I liked too that I wish they didn't show either was the Hall of Mirror scene with James McAvoy's yeah. character. I don't remember that kid's name, the character, the one with the stutter, but him just kind of like getting lost in and he sees that kid and he's kind of like worried about that kid and then seeing Pennywise with that long tongue and I've already seen the pop, but oh, it freaking creeps me out. And then just that, just being completely petrified of knowing what that, what Pennywise will do to that kid that he's trying to get out. Love that part in the trailer. And I really want the pop of the tongue, uh, the long tongue Pennywise now, because I'm like, that is so cool. Now, another thing that I kind of got from this trailer as well, Chris, you can always chime in whenever. I noticed that, the, you know, Pennywise talking points in the trailer is basically he's going for revenge for what they did to him yes. 27 years in. He has not forgotten it. Like, he has to eat, but he sure as hell damn well have not forgotten about it. And mm-hmm. looks like the stakes are going to be a little bit higher now with the Losers Club that... You know, they're going to have to be on the defense now because Pennywise is coming for them. Also, I noticed in this red trailer, that's enough damn red balloons. You could throw a damn birthday party with those. That's too much. <laughs> like, what the hell? And then this was this was something that I didn't know if they were going to bring him back. But McFloaty himself, Georgie, will be showing back up as a creepy, angry yes. kid. And then the last thing I've noticed in this trailer, yeah, I actually watched it a few times, is you don't ever really see any sight of adult Stanley. Except no. a back shot of his head when the loser club is all holding hands, doing some type of possibly a ritual. Yeah, I caught that, and I was like, because I, I while I was watching, I'm like, wait, there's one kid missing, and the reason why I caught on, I caught my eye on it was I, I was like, wait, so I looked up the kid's names, and I'm like, wait, where's Stanley? I'm like, who the hell plays Stanley anyway? It's the guy, the actor Andy Bean, who was just recently. In Swamp Thing, he played the the main character in Swamp Thing, which just got canceled, sadly. So, yeah, I don't know why he's not being prominently shown. So, I'm curious, does he die? I have no idea. We've never read the books. So, those are a few of the things that I know, Chris. Anything that you have to add on or anything that you spotted or just your thoughts? No, I mean, I I, I think you you really kind of nailed it. Um, I took my time. (laughs) You really did. Wow. You did more work than I did. Um. I just watched it and I wanted to see if I liked it or not. And I, I liked it a lot, but you really kind of dove into this. McFloaty. Um, <laughs> shut up. We should have titled that one McFloaty. <laughs> okay, calm down over there, Patrick. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I'm excited for it. I, I can't wait to see it. But I just don't want to see any more trailers <laughs> on it because I kind of feel like that they showed us enough. Isn't that crazy? With all that stuff in that one trailer, I was able to analyze all this. And I don't usually analyze, I don't analyze that much usually, but that was just kind of like, I was just like, hmm, just a lot of questions and I'm hoping that we get a lot of answers and I hope this is a fitting conclusion to it because I was telling you when we saw the first one, like, there's no way they're going to top the second one. Like, I'm like, I I don't think, I don't, I, I, you know, I mean, like, there's no way they're going to top the first one, excuse me. Like, there's no way, like the hype is too crazy. We've already been, we've already like matched the hype with Endgame. I'm like, there's only two movies, I think two, three movies a year that you can match the hype with the actual product. And we already got Endgame. I believe we already got John Wick. And I got to save that last slot for Rise of Skywalker or The Irishman, which I can't wait for. We're done with trailers. We're going to move over to Funko News. And we'll just talk about the San Diego Comic-Con uh, reveals. You know, a lot of things were posted that people were there and they kind of gave info on. The first one I want to talk about, Krista, is... Uh, Something from Toys R Us. Jeffrey is going to become Batman. A Jeffrey Toys R Us Batman pop. Have you seen this? That is insane. 
I wanted Jeffrey so bad. Like, it's weird. I'm not that big in the ad icons. And then I realized you are in the ad icons because I want a Jeffrey pop. Like, but I didn't get the Iron Man one. So I definitely have to get this Batman one. Now I'm curious. Well, though. Well, this is going to be a Target exclusive. It's this. Oh, yeah. It says right there. It's going to be available. Oh, God. It's going to be available in September. Man, wallet. <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> Because, man, my hero's so killing my wall. Drugs, I know. <laughs> yeah, say it on the podcast so we can get recode. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I like the Jeffrey as Batman. It's just pretty, you know, pretty standard. It's just Jeffrey with, uh, with like, uh, he, he has it's a... the old school Batman. Yeah. Like, costume. Yeah, I like that. I like that and costume. Yeah, I like because he has a little, like, the he has, like, the, instead of, like, a whole mask, a whole cow, he just has, like, the two things over his eye. That's really cool. He has, like, a Robin mask. An old Batman. Isn't it weird though that that Target is getting Jeffrey from Toys R Us exclusive? Are they bringing well, there's back? There's no Toys R Us. No, they're so bringing the best thing they got. They're bringing them back. Didn't you hear? Not yet. Yeah, but once you save this pop, then I would nah. save that if I was Toys R Us. So that one's coming. No, September. because no, because it's the it's the 80th um, Oh, anniversary. that's right. Damn, Toys R Us screwed up. So we'll move over to the next one now. This one. Is possibly one in the future. It's a Mickey looking like Jordan pop. Like he's got a basketball hat. Looks like he's whoa, doing. Whoa, 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 whoa! You missed a couple. I'm from just that post. What? So it looks like I thought I thought that was it for this post with the San Diego pops after the Jeffrey Batman. But Chris, there's more. What what else have we got here, Chris? Next up is a deluxe edition Batman: The Complete Series. Oh wow! Is this? <gasps> Oh, wow. Well. Oh, Batman yeah. Batman Beyond. Yes, I want this. Yes. We didn't don't... you already pre order this through Amazon? Yeah, I did. Did you see that price? Uh-huh. <laughs> did, did you see Batman. that price? It's crazy. Yeah, this is a, you have to admit, this is a really cool one. Now, is this one going to be in that? I'll link it in the description. Amazon selling this exclusive Batman Beyond complete series on Blu ray, which comes with a pop, which I'm kind of nervous about because Amazon is notoriously horrible shippers. What do you think, Chris? I mean, is this going to be the one you think that's going to be in there, or is this going to be another one? I don't know. I don't want to deal with Amazon. So what's our next Batman? Our next one is the one that I want. This is a Target-only Batman, and he's in all red. Now, this is different from the Chrome one that was a Funko Shop exclusive. This one isn't as metallic as that one. Well, they basically... It's it's it looks similar as, except, you know his uh you know where his mouth and like bottom of his face is that's not red like that's open like a regular Batman mask. Yeah. What do you think about this? They're trying to. Yeah, they're trying to switch it up with the Chromes. You think? I don't know. I feel like we ain't too many Batmans. No, you. What are you talking about? You can never have enough Batmans. Yes, you can. Bring on you. Oh, please. Chrome snob yourself, you're like bring on more chromes. <laughs> you love the damn Batman chromes. You like bat. You have more Batman pops than I do. What are you talking about? Enough Batmans. You have more Batman pops than most people have in a lifetime. That's not true. That is not. Um, true. I just think that they can make other things. That is true, but Batman is gonna sell regardless, and you know this. And it's, 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 it's his it's eightieth anniversary, so of course they're gonna make more pops than they normally would of Batman. So let's move over to. Another pop that was revealed, something in the future, obviously, because this this photo of it is not a complete, it looks like a prototype. It's a prototype. But it looks like a future Mickey Mouse pop will be him, which they're saying might be a Disney Parks exclusive. Looks like him channeling in his Michael Jordan. He looks like he's he's about to dunk or something, right, Chris? I mean, yes, this one is pretty cool. Yeah, he's got his mouth open too, so I'm wondering if it's going to be like a very, like a, like a, insp- inspired by Michael Jordan. I like this pop. I'm willing to go to Disney Parks to get this pop. Because I don't. Well, luckily for you, it's only a thirty-minute drive. Yeah. Another thing is, I don't have many Mickey Mouse pops. I don't even think I have a Mickey Mouse pop. You have a Minnie Mouse. I don't have any, and I would like to get. I them. also have the Diamond Edition Mickey. Exactly. I don't have any Mickey Mouse pops. I like Mickey you're Mouse. You're a Disney fan. I am a Disney fan. I fuck oh, you and your credentials to be a Disney fan. I don't talk about it as much as you do, but. Unlike you, Disney fan, I'm more of a Disney fan. I like Mickey Mouse. You like all the stuff that Disney made in anime class. You don't even like Mickey as much. You couldn't even put Mickey in your top five. Top five of what? Of like top Disney characters. Oh, I oh, don't know. That's hard. revoking the past now. So this one, we don't know when it's coming, right? It's it's just no. yeah. I think that's I think that's an interesting spin 
on Mickey Mouse is something different. So let's talk about some of the Funko Fun Day pops you could be getting. Because, Chrissy, you just got yours in the mail. And you're, you know, very nice to share with me, possibly, uh, a few pops. <laughs> Well, I thought I thought we could just share the pop. Like, I don't want to give you a pop. Like, I would like to just share the pop with you. Oh, like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'd rather just it's take. A, it's just, a mutual pop. Oh no, I really just take one. Let's talk about some of these that we're gonna see here. So the first one that I'm seeing, hopefully you see it as well. Colonel Sanders, Freddie Funko is Colonel Sanders holding a bucket of chicken. Did you see this pop? Yes. What do you think about the Freddie? I love. I've become. Freddie Funko is like skyrocket is like some of my like favorite pops. I want this one of him as uh, Colonel Sanders. What do you, I mean? That just looks awesome. I got the Colonel Sanders pop. Now I need the Freddie one. I don't know about you. I think well, Freddie. Well, the can- Colonel Sanders is only there's only five. There's only four fifty made, Patrick. Yeah, lovely. So I don't think you're getting that one anytime soon. Yeah, I'm going to fork out the dough, <laughs> so my collection on my Funko app can grow. I like this pop. I think that they continue to be kind of innovative with how they keep making different pops for fun days. I like that Freddy continues to play other characters or like cosplays as them. So the next one we got. Oh no, that Freddy Funko's 290. You're crazy. What are you talking about? I, I gotta get it though. All right, okay. what? All right, all right, maybe the next one will, will be better. Let's talk about Freddy Funko as Aquaman, which is only 350 pieces. Chris, I'd like to get that one too. <laughs> Patrick. So this is uh Freddy is kind of a traditional Aquaman, not the sexy. That one's two ninety two, by the way. Yeah, that's not the sexy Jason Momoa version. This is the traditional costume with him with these gold or his golden like green costume, like old school, like golden age um, Aquaman. I like this pop. I think it was better that they went more old school versus like new school. I don't know about you. I, I kind of like the old school look on Freddy. It seems to accommodate his look. If that makes sense. I know the last one you really really want okay well i see that there's another photo on this one because i almost skipped out of it but this these ones you don't like i think these are the pops that you don't like uh ringo which is like kind of like a like a like a like a statue type of a tiki there you go you don't like the tiki's man i like the tiki's yeah i want this ringo one this one's interesting chris i thought it was weird so will this be attainable for me it's 520 pieces will i be able to get that no (laughs) <laughs> okay okay so let's move over to looks like the i think the last uh reveals we got this one's interesting yes i want this yes i you knew it i knew it freddie funko as c-3po from star wars i gotta have it gotta have this one that one unfortunately you're not going to be able to obtain it's only 520 pieces okay and it's trending for 330 dollars you act like this is a problem for a funko fanatic like myself i'm willing to drop this money to get some of these funkos you won't i'm not crazy Sometimes we have to spend a little more than the average person because we do a YouTube because I've noticed some people in comments on our channel or other people's channels that they're like, I just like watching people go crazy about these because I can't, my wallet can't. So I'm, I, I think, Krista, this is attainable we for one of us. Our wallet can't, Patrick. My wallet says yes. <laughs> my I'm ba- telling you right now, people are selling some drugs because <laughs> we cannot afford this habit, okay? <laughs> We are Funko junkies. Yeah, we are, and I, I got, I got to fix. I got to get a fix because I, I need something. So, oh, you gotta get a fix. Yeah, I gotta get a fix. So, I like all the Freddy Fun Days. I'm gonna, act, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you, Chris. I'm serious. I'm going to Rise of the Shield Hero. Not for me, Iwatani. Work my ass off to get these pops. I really want more Freddy Funkos. If anybody's seen our channel of recent on YouTube, I've become. Uh, big in the Freddy Funko line. I think it's a really cool line. And there's some pops that are even worse than this that we haven't talked about, Chris, which I cannot wait. We can talk about next time. Yeah, so let's move over. Yeah, because we're already we're pressed for time here. I'm already looking at the clock like, whoo, yep, we talked yep. a lot about Funko. So let's move over to stop, stop. Take Me to the Outer Rim. And this is our Star Wars segment where we talk about everything, 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 and anything Star Wars. Let's talk a little bit about somebody we spoke about his film earlier, but he's also back in the news for Star Wars, Kevin Smith. Now, Kevin Smith had a heart attack last year, and J.J. Abrams told him that he could come on the set of The Rise of Skywalker. So he went on the set, and he did a little interview recently, and he dropped a little bit of tidbit of news. He was told by people working at Pinewood Studios for the film that the last... Scene. You have to. Ch- they, basically, they want them to check out this set. It's apparently mind blowing. The film, the last shot of the film. You got to see how it ends. 
He spoke to J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams said, don't do it. Don't spoil it for yourself. You have to see this in theaters. Don't go look at it. And Kevin decided, despite pleas from other people in, in that worked there, that he decided not to do it because he he kind of used he kind of compared to being like he kind of compared JJ to being like a magician, where you you know you know that there's a trick to it, but you decide, you know what, I don't want to spoil it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be fooled and wondered as I watch it. So he decided not to watch it. He's gonna go to the or he's gonna go to the movie theater like the rest of us. And he's going to experience it just like the rest of it. He doesn't want to spoil it. What do you think about that, Grizza? That's fantastic. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, I kind of like that Kevin Smith is still kind of grounded despite a fan. being. Yeah, he's still a. Yeah, that's the best way to say it. Instead of grounded, he's a fan still, and that he could possibly. And foremost. Yeah, he yeah. Could, yeah, he could possibly spoil it for himself, but he's like, you know what? I don't need to. Even though I have the opportunity to, and so many other people would do it, he's like, I still want that. That movie magic. You would do it. I wouldn't do it. No. Yes, you would. No, I would not. No, I would not. Why? I would not. I would probably rather be spoiled with like 75% of the film, but the ending, like the 25% of that like mind-blowing ending that they're talking about, no, I, I would rather see it in theaters. I, I don't want to be completely spoiled. Chris, if I was on the set of The Rise of Skywalker, I'd be just damn happy if I, I got to go visit the toilet that all the stars <laughs> use. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I wouldn't even care. Uh, I will always remember this. <laughs> when we went to watch The Force Awakens... And you missed the opening scroll to get snacks. Damn. And our friend Kyle ran up the stairs. He still missed the scroll. Yeah, I know. I don't understand. Yeah, he still missed the scroll. I don't get it and, either. And his wife, Trisha, goes, he never does cardio. And then I see your little short self right behind him. And I knew you were pissed. And I knew there was no way I would ever be able to let this down. Nope. You no. waited all day in line. For, <laughs> this is before reserves. For damn snacks. I was like, why am I going down? Like, why am I the one going down? I didn't understand that. And <laughs> since then, Chris will never lets. Chris is like, never again. Last Jedi, I didn't miss a scroll. Um, Rogue One didn't have a scroll. Solo didn't have a scroll. Anytime a Star Wars comes out, Chris is like, you know what? I'll just go get the snacks. I don't want to ruin actually, this experience. Actually, Last Jedi, I had to drag you to. I was because sick. You were sick. Yeah, I did not feel good. I, so, all right. But I talk, told you, get up, take some medicine, put your shoes on. I'm not going to hear it from you that you got sick and you missed your movie. I just want you guys to know, don't don't, don't think of her as a good Samaritan. She just didn't want me to be like, I told you so. You made me ruin the, <laughs> I missed the scroll and now I got to miss the last Jedi, the best <laughs> Star Wars film ever. <laughs> Said nobody except me. So... Let's talk about really quick here the mind blowing, Chris. They're they're teasing the Kevin Smith that this is a mind blowing thing. You have to see this is the I, final shot. I absolutely believe this. I really do think because you're ending a saga that has lasted over forty years. Yeah, and the stakes are high. Got to deliver. And I and I believe this is going to deliver. Yeah, I, I'm curious to what's so mind blowing because I was like, is it going to be controversial a lot to Last Jedi? You yes. know. You know, I love JJ for one particular reason is that I think he truly is a filmmaker. He he's very secretive about his film, even to the trailers. He never really reveals anything till the very end when you're in the theater waiting to watch the movie. Like as soon as the trailer, that's how it should be. Exactly, that's something that a lot of studios, a lot of filmmakers should look to because we're starting to lose that and we're getting everything spoiled with too many trailers. You know, people have to know everything before they watch the movie, which I find. You know, just so strange. But, yeah, I'm curious what exactly, you know, what exactly it is. Hip, hip, hooray to Kevin Smith because... Hip, hip, hooray! hooray. Because, you know, many of us would have been, like, tempted. Like, Adam and Eve tempted. Like, I'm not even that religious, but Adam and Eve tempted to go look at that set. Like, about 98% of us would do it. And Chris thinks that I would... I don't think so. I think I would have been like, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think I need to be there. I need to... I would. Like, really? Yeah, I, exactly. Instead of blaming me and saying I would, it's you. It's you. Shame on you. But um, you know, Shame. that's why I love Kevin Smith. Is, is like Chris has said, he's a fan first, and he he's like you don't know. And a lot of us would have been like, yeah, but I like that Kevin Smith, who has the opportunity to be on the set of Sky or uh, Rise of Skywalker, is like you know what? No, JJ told me no. I trust in JJ. So do I. 
Hell yeah. So I expect with this mind blowing thing that, that they're, that Kevin was teasing about that they teased him with, it's gotta be something. It's gotta be like a major twist. That's going to change the way we love Star Wars. I think it's going to be something that epic where it's going to, it's going to challenge everything that we've believed in with Star Wars. That's what I think. That's, that's what's going to blow my mind. You know, is it, you know, or with my luck, it's just, it's just Lando and nine nub destroying the Death Star again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, or it's like, you know, Kyle, what about like Kylo Ren turning Ray into, you know, into the dark side and then Finn's got to use that lightsaber and then he's got to, co- <sighs> yeah, like what if it's something that mind blowing where it's like, but then again, I don't see Ray ever turning. Like, I don't believe that Ray would do it, but, or what if Ray sacrifices herself for the greater good and then, you know, puts the galaxy in the right balance, you know, or is it Finn wielding a lightsaber you know, after he trained with Ray and they whoop Kylo's ass. You know, I don't know. Regardless, it's going to be jaw drop. It's going to be something so epic. And I think it's going to be talked for the ages. I think this is going to be something we're going to be talking about for a long time. And I'm talking about like, it's going to be even bigger than Endgame Infinity War. Like something that's going to blow our minds. Like those two blew our minds, but this is not going to be anywhere near it in the sense. This is going to be on another level. So I have no idea, but you know what? Kevin Smith has already got the hype train. He's got to even like shifted in higher gears now for me because now I'm like, what the hell is it? You know what I mean? I can't wait. I know Chris is like, you know what? I, I all she's thinking about is like, I want to be on that set. I would have spoiled it for myself. I would have, you know what? You probably would have spoiled it for me. You would have told me on accident, like, oh my god, I just went to the last scene of of the Rise of Skywalker. It's this, this, that, and that. And I'm like, thanks. I thought the scroll was horrible. This is even worse. <laughs> and then the whole time I'm, I'm the whole time I'm excited about like oh you know what I'm still excited for the movie Chris had told me what's gonna happen I'm gonna know it and then I'm gonna be like what the hell they fooled you and they put it was something else I'm like ha ha Chris you thought you ruined it for me no you ruined it for yourself like that's God, how so I feel I know You're so weird. but you we yeah that left field yeah I know but I just know for a fact that you would spoil it like at the end of the day you were right yeah you would do it over me you would be tempted to go find out what the hell it is. And you would be pretty excited about it. So I don't know. I don't know. So we'll find out soon enough in a few months. So that is it for Take Me to the Outer Rim. And we're almost done because we got one more review. This is from a television series that I had no idea that we were going to be watching. Chris had decided to watch it. And I'm like, I've heard a lot of hype about it. It's called Big Little Lies. We're going to do season one review. And I was like, you know, I, I got to watch it too. If Chris is watching it, I'm like, we could use some television. We haven't tackled much television. So... Krista, I mean, what made you watch Big Little Lies? Um, well, I wasn't feeling good, and I called out sick to work, which is not like me. I usually go to work even when I am sick. And um, I don't know. I, I, I was, like, perusing, and I wanted to see what was on HBO, and that popped up. And I go, you know what? Let me check this out. Okay. I love everyone in the show. All right, well, let's... I love Shanley Woodley. I love Reese Witherspoon. I love Nicole Kidman, Zoe Kravitz, Laura Dern. And I'm like, let's, let's watch the first episode and let's see what it's all about. All right. Well, and I was hooked. Uh, so was I. I mean, I, I, I took your word for it and then I got hooked. So let's, let me get through the basics because we got to review this because we're on a time limit here. We've been talking all this awesome stuff. I can't believe we've been talking for almost two hours, which I don't mind. I love podcasts that are long. So Big Little Lies Season 1, let's talk about the basics. This stars Reese Witherspoon, Laura Dern, Nicole Kidman, Zoe Kravitz, Shailene Woodley. And the synopsis of this is a single mother moves to a town and she gets engulfed in the world of the upper class. And a murder happens, which turns all their lives upside down. Krissa, we are going to do spoiler-free section, then spoiler section, and final thoughts and ratings. So we are in the spoiler-free section of Big Little Lies Season 1 review. Krissa, take it away. Okay, I'm going to make this short and sweet because I want to dive into the spoilers. Me too. Okay, so Big Little Lies Season 1, I loved it. I felt like they did such a great job with pacing the story. And I was trying to figure out what happened. And I was trying to figure out who died. Because I knew someone died. This reminds me of an adult version of Gossip Girl. You're dealing with (laughs) scandal. You're dealing with fraud. 
You're dealing with affairs. You're dealing with the Upper East Side. I'm just joking. <coughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're, you're talking dealing, about. <laughs> but you're dealing with rich, empowering women. And how egos get in the way. And how a lie can unravel. And have a shelf life. And how it can destroy your life. Oh, wow. Okay. Is, is that it? That is all I'm going to say for spoiler free. All right. For me, I thought this limited, this limited series was a slow burner with a huge payoff because, you know, just so many intricate storylines kind of weaving in together. It was very, uh, I guess, a film-wise, if I had to compare it to, it was very Pulp Fiction with different storylines, you know, weaving together. And I'm like trying to figure out what the hell. Well, then. Yeah, woven, excuse me. I'm trying to figure out, like, what the hell's going on here. I know I was already spoiled to who got murdered. But trying to piece it together, that was hard to do, which I, I found more enjoyable this series because I couldn't figure it out. So it kept it kept me on my toes. So I really like this, and especially the cast. I mean, these ladies are brilliant. I mean, top of their game. I'm especially, especially Shailene Woodley and Laura Dern, they were in top form because I knew that Nicole Kidman was going to bring it. I know that Reese Witherspoon was going to bring it. And also Zoe Kravitz was a pleasant surprise. Would like to see her tackle more, um, like to see her tackle more dramatic uh, roles. I think she she could really uh, do some wonders there. I really like this series because of the fact that it's kind of like a murder mystery, but slash like yes. kind of, it's kind of like a, like a, it's basically like a drama. Murder too. mystery meets gossip girl. Yeah. And it, yeah, as Chris described to me and actually, yeah, it was pretty much spot on. I thought it was really enjoyable. It was hard to figure out, even though I knew some things, I did figure things out toward the end, but it was like barely to the end that I pieced it together. And I really found this, this kind of a thrilling experience. And something that everyone should watch. So that's it for me on spoiler-free section. So we're going to move over to spoiler section. If you haven't seen Big Little Lies, it's available on HBO. Definitely go watch and then come back. If not, you got three seconds and Chris is going to go ahead and spoil away. Chris? We are now in the spoiler section. Um, Patrick, I'm going to kind of just breeze through this a little bit and just chime in when you're ready. Okay. I have how <laughs> everyone is connected, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> just because I know we're crunched for time. I know. <laughs> okay. So the story of, the story begins with Jane Chapin, um, which is Shaylee Willie's character, moving her son Ziggy to Monterey, California. What a weird name, Ziggy. Like I thought it was like named after Ziggy Marley. <laughs> So Ziggy was conceived when Jane was sexually assaulted, but she had never talked to anyone about it. So she holds this deep, dark secret inside of her. She didn't even know who the assailant was. She didn't really like, like fully remember what he looked like, right? She just exactly yeah, it was like fragments. Well, and, and that happens when you go through something traumatic like that. So the drama all starts on the first day of school. When Ziggy is accused of choking a little girl named Amabella. Now, Amabella is the daughter of Renata Klein. Renata Klein is one of the most powerful and popular moms at Otter Bay, which is a school they, the kids go to. This is Laura Dern's character. Laura Dern, thank you. Now, she tries to ostracize Jane and Ziggy because they feel, or someone quotes in the show, it's like a dirty Prius parked in front of a Barney's. They do not belong. Yeah, I don't even understand what that means. Like, I'm like, what the what the hell? Like, I didn't well, like the rich people. Barney's is like, it's, it's like, it's like a high-end store. The only Barney and, I know is a dinosaur. <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> so, this creates conflict, and Jane's new friend, Madeline McKenzie, Reese Witherspoon, Reese Witherspoon, comes to the rescue, along with her BFF, Celeste. Now, Madeline Nicole Kidman's already character. has Nicole Kidman, yes. Madeline already has a problem with Renata because Renata is trying to close down her production of Avenue Q. Which I don't know what that is either. It's a Broadway show. Okay, okay, okay. About puppets and sexuality. And they drop a lot of F-bombs. Anyways. Follow me. Madeline has a deep secret of her own. She had an affair with a theater uh, owner, but she is happily married or quote-unquote happily married to Ed, and her and Ed have a daughter named Chloe. Mm -hmm. Now, Madeline has another daughter named Abigail, and she had that with her first husband, Nathan. 
Nathan is remarried to Bonnie. Bonnie is played by Zoe Kravitz. What a what they a They have a daughter world. together named Sky. <laughs> Ziggy All and of Sky. the kids. <laughs> I know. All of the kids are go to the same school, Otter Bay, and they're all in the same grade. Yes. Now, back to Celeste. Celeste is played by Nicole Kidman, and she has two twin boys named Josh and Max with her husband, Perry, who her deep little secret is he physically abuses her. Also, I thought he emotionally and mentally as well, right? Because he's very demanding. But mostly yes. physical, yeah. He's, he's very possessive. Yeah, he's very angry. Like He's got to get that checked. Now, everything becomes a whirlwind because of all of this. Who is biting and choking Amabella? They think it's Ziggy. It's not Ziggy. Always, blame the, out, always blame the poor person, right? Like, <laughs> I know, right? right yeah. It turns out that it was Max, Celeste's son. And he learned these behaviors from observing his father abuse his mother. Yeah, and they had no Even idea. Even though they thought the kids didn't see anything. Yeah, because like, Perry was really good at like masking who he really was in front of his kids. Like, he was a great father, but he was not a great person. Not really a great husband either. So the way that they, they kind of slowly built that up. Because the whole time I knew that it was Perry that died... And I knew a little bit about it, but seeing it come to fruition was pretty interesting because, you know, they fool you in the first couple episodes. You think he's a nice guy, and he's totally the opposite. But yeah, when his kid, when I found out, I actually called that, Chris. Finally, I like halfway, I'm like, wait, I bet you it's that kid. It's one of the kids. Well, I knew that he was the one who raped um, Jane. Okay, I caught that one toward like midway as well, and I'm like, oh, he's really. I caught it in the beginning when when, when she was talking about. Um, that night and what she went through, we we had already seen Nicole Kidman's uh, Celeste and Perry's relationship. How he would get physically abusive with her, yeah, and then it would lead to them sleeping together. But I didn't think they would. Put, I didn't think they were. They were gonna put two and I didn't. I didn't put two and two together because I didn't know if they would put the same family as both perpetrators. So I was like trying to like figure out something else. But yeah, you were smart to just be like you know that's it. Now, everything comes to a crashing halt when all of the adults go to a school charity event where it's an Audrey Hepburn and Elvis-themed charity event. So the women dress up as Audrey Hepburn and the men dress up as Elvis. What kind of party is this? There's also like a talent show going on. What kind of party? Like this would never happen at my school. Like this is... It would. It would in Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl Royal. Sometimes I think it is. Yeah, I can I tell. Like so. It's like Chris has spotted. it. This is rich people's problems. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it leads to this, to this crazy thing where somebody gets killed. Yes. but the whole Perry. Yeah, but you didn't and know that in the beginning. Like, the, the way they built it up was... It was I both, didn't. It was both, I didn't. Now... I think what makes this so, well, at least for me, what made it so interesting is going back to Madeline's character and Bonnie's character, um, they're total opposites. Madeline's very high strung. She's very vocal. She's very emotional. And Bonnie's very kind of zen and mellow. And let's talk about our feelings kind of thing. So what, 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 makes, what makes it interesting is that everyone's lies catch up to one another. No, no matter how big or little, the lies yes, exactly, exactly. come out. The truth comes so, out. So Madeline has to face the fact that she had an affair and she did not her husband. Oh, and that was crazy with that accident. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, that exactly. was insane. And so she and Jane sneak off because she got drunk and she doesn't know how to deal with her emotions. Her husband's up on stage singing this beautiful song. And she realizes that she's a piece of shit. How could she cheat on this man that devotes and loves her? Yeah, I know. Even though she countlessly talks about her ex-husband all the time. I know somebody that's like that. I'm like, dude, enough. To be with her. And so Jane's consoling her because Jane has finally moved past the fact that she has been sexually abused. She wants to try to be in a relationship. So she's trying to move forward in her life. 
So as a good friend, she's consulting Madeline. Now there's a whole other whirlwind going on where Celeste is going to leave Perry. He almost killed her. And this is it. She's seen the therapist. She's going to leave him. She's letting him know. She got an own that, place, another place. Yeah. Exactly. She's letting him know that what the that that uh, Max is the one that has been abusing Abella, and she's going to tell Renata. And so it, it ends up being like this chaotic thing, and I loved how they paced everything together. But in the end, they wa- they get away from the charity event. And they walk down these stairs. Which and you then see like, more stairs to go down. Which you see like throughout and, the whole season. Yes. And um, you're trying to figure out why. Like, like why are we keep doing this? Yes. And what ends up happening is Perry goes after Celeste, and down there is Renata, Celeste, Madeline, and um, and Jane, and they're all talking, and you know. And all of a sudden, Perry starts attacking uh, Celeste. And Zoe Kravitz's character, Bonnie, comes running down. And all of a sudden, she's running because she sees them all trying to protect her. And he's hitting her. He's kicking her. And she pushes him. Yeah, that yeah, that was... That one I... That I was, is what drew me in. Yeah, because I was like... I, I couldn't believe that it was Bonnie was the one. But I know! Out of all the characters. The most zen person. But, but you know, that's good. That's good writing. But that's your your you know flight or fight you know mode. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna breeze through this real quick because I know that you still want to say some say some stuff. But so when we're you know like I said, this series opens up where the murder has already happened, and I love how it's all these testimonies from people that's not even actually the main cast. It's like the principal. It's like staff from the school all recounting the night and also sharing their true feelings that are more biased about each of the moms involved. And I loved how they, they kind of like kind of helped push the story along and we kind of get to know the characters a little bit more, even if we don't see like the way they describe them immediately eventually happen. So when we got to that murder, I'm kind of like, I'm like, I knew someone was going to die. I'm like, I knew it was Perry, but I'm like, I want to see how it goes down. And then them somehow they all like the, the world, like the galaxy knew to bring them all together and then when Perry shows up to basically take Celeste away and probably physically abuse her again and make her stay with him, that look that Jane has on her face of sheer horror and like the traumatic events of her life kind of come back in full circle because she sees the horror from the monster in front of her, I was like, oh my god, I was right. I was like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? And his face, Alexander Skarsgård, a brilliant actor, he's not even like, he's not even like, he's not even like, like mortified. He's, well, he's, he's basically terrified. Like he's, he's like scared because finally, not only for these ladies, but the truth from hiding a lie of cheating on his wife have come back in full circle. And then when Celeste finds out, oh my God, it's just that huge back and forth because he's trying to take her. And those ladies cannot take on Perry. Perry is a force of nature. And it takes Bonnie, who just happened to have intuition to go see what the hell's going on here. Something's not right. She ends up pushing him off. And you're just like, what the hell? Like, I didn't think it was actually even about, like the story-wise, I thought this had to do more with Madeline and Jane, but this really is mostly Celeste's story, to be honest with you. Yes. So that's all I want to say. I just thought that that whole buildup of this whole series, even though you're just, you know, there's a murder, but there's just, it's just so thrilling and suspenseful of trying to figure out exactly what happened. Go ahead. Agreed. Anything else, Chris? Because I know you still want to say some things. No, no. I mean, that, that that's pretty much it. It, it and I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's nice sometimes to, to binge things because then you don't have to wait as long. But now that I've binged the first and second season, and the second season just ended, mm-hmm. <sighs> excuse me, I'm tired. Um, now I have to wait and see if they're going to make a third season. Yeah, well, but just this first season, just to f- let's do final thoughts and rain. Let's let's wrap this so, up. So, so final thoughts. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get into this show earlier, but at the same time, I'm not because then I had the privilege of, of binging both first and second season. So I know what entails in the second season, but just leaving the first season, I was like, Oh my God, this is an adult version of Gossip Girl. 
Yeah, so <laughs> I can't relate to because I, I haven't really watched. I've seen like bits and parts. For me, this is uh, one of the best limited series I've ever seen because you got A list cast, and this is an A list story that matches the cast and the way that these actresses portray their characters. They help create this incredible story and this incredible world of characters. And it's like a murder mystery suspense thriller slash like rich people drama. And, and they somehow like it, it shouldn't work. It works. And the payoff of, of the slow burning story, even though it's like a, it's only what eight episodes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah seven. seven episodes, but it's, it's slow burning, but yet it's so good. The delivery is worth it. You know, the performances are amazing, but it's a wild ride that I had no idea what was going to happen. Even though I had prior knowledge of some of the things spoiled to me, it still surprised me at the end. So, Krista, what's your rating? Um, rating for me on, on this one is going to be a 93. 93. I'm actually going to give it a 95. I really love this. I think this first season is near perfect. As just like the Rise of the Shield Hero, two good shows I just recently binge watched in like a like a few days. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So definitely check it out. And uh, we finished season two, so we're gonna be wrapping that up as well. And I can't wait to talk about that one because that one's even more interesting than Woo! the first season. So this is the end of the episode. So thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time, definitely subscribe to us on any platform we're also available on youtube this podcast and chris where can they find us on social media well you can find us on instagram twitter and snapchat at toc movies and then head over to facebook and give us a like at tomorrow comes movies and then you can head over to our website at toc movies.com it's gonna be our main hub and as we mentioned earlier in our Funko section, we have so much Funko content. If you have not yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tomorrow comes movies. And also thank you to everyone that's already tuned in for our podcast from some of them from the very beginning to maybe just a few weeks ago, whatever. We really appreciate everyone uh, partaking and, and listening to our journey as we review movies and talk about things. And of course, we please ask that you give us a review on any platform that takes reviews for the podcast, a star rating of your choosing. And of course, write something. Those are the ones that count. If you're looking for pops, Go to Sick Pops and Collectibles. They have everything you need. Use the promo code TCM10. And you can save 10% off any common or pre-order. Get those My Hero Academia Pops. Go to S-I-C-C-P-O-P-S-O-C.com. SickPopsOC.com. And if you're looking for some in-stock items or maybe some pre-orders or anything else, go to ShoeMeStore.com and use our promo code TOCMovies. And you will save 10% off your purchase. It does not count toward pop protectors or mystery boxes. So go to shumistore.com, shumistore.com, and use that promo code. And that is it. So this weekend, we're going to be at Animanga in Pomona, California, which I'll link in the description. If you're interested in going, we're going to be there. And hopefully, maybe we'll get our buns in order so we can give some out. But that is it. So, Krista, as always, your host are the Patrick and... Carissa. Can't shield these lies. Episode 97. Until next time, stay tuned for another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, this is Kyle Phillips. I hope you enjoyed, and I uh, hope you do more stuff with Tomorrow Comes Movies.